Hello, look, mum, no computer here, and yes, I am a walking contradiction. This is a computer. So what we have right here is actually quite a gem. It's a Southwest Technical uh, SWTP for short, 6809. It's a late 70s computer and it is a progression of the SWTPC uh, 6800. And yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? So SWT were a kit company that sold electronic kits and they were one of the like pioneers in selling uh, basically microcomputers and yes, that is a microcomputer. You're looking at a microcomputer. I know the uh, the definition is slightly different nowadays, isn't it? But this thing was built on the Motorola 6809 processor and the one before it, the 6800, was built on the 6800 processor. So this is uh, a pretty early device and it's very snazzy. So the first thing I need to talk about is how did a plonker like me end up with a gem like this. So in the weekend I'm going to be doing another video and it might add a bit more context to the situation but basically I went to go and pick something up that I purchased from a, a fella called Bailey in Stevenage uh, and uh, when I went and picked it up this was in the garage as well and it's similar to the old adage of you walk into a guitar shop for a plectrum and somehow somehow you've managed to just clear your bank account and uh, leave with a guitar. It's, this sort of happened and now I need to live on baked beans for the next three months. <laughs> but then needless to say, this kind of thing doesn't come around every day. It's got the 8212 terminal, it's got the computer and it also has the floppy drive. It also has a mountain of documentation, eight inch discs and some blank eight inch discs. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll just... So I usually only tend to get hold of things that I know I can make music with. This thing is a little bit more of a mystery because I have a feeling you can make music with it. I mean, like make really bad nursery rhymes. So I reckon it is definitely possible. And this is what I'm aiming to get out of this is to be able to at least get it to play uh, a tune, at least a little tune, at least. <laughs> And to make matters worse, I have a few overhanging uh, computer projects. For instance, I'm actually currently working on a Commodore 4064, which is a school Commodore 64. It hasn't got a SID chip in it, which is a shame. And this I managed to get hold of from an awesome person called Julian from Braunschweig when I was on my last tour, uh, just before the whole Corona thing and it all got mixed up a little bit. But I'm trying to figure out how to modify it without permanently modifying it so it can go back to original. So you're about to watch a video likely with a lot of ill-informed information uh, because I'm a bit of a plonker and I don't really know what I'm looking at and I wasn't actually intending to end up taking something like this uh, back with me. So without further ado let's have a closer look at what we've got shall we? So if you aren't aware this computer was from a time where there was computer terminals. This isn't the computer it's just the monitor and the keyboard. You can actually use uh, other computer terminals that aren't made for this computer with the computer. However, there are certain things that this terminal listens to the computer that other things don't. It was taken from an electronic engineer's workshop, uh, which is where I got the other parts, which I'll be talking about this weekend, as well as having a look at where I got it from and the situation about it. So this has probably been owned by the same electrical engineer since the start. This right here is the 6809. And I've got to be honest, I haven't even looked inside. Uh, so I might have been very silly and it might be completely empty. We'll have to see. I have not turned it on yet bit of a scary time. Below it is the floppy drive and yes this takes 8 inch floppies, the huge. They are as big as your face. I've had a little look over it, the terminal has a blown fuse on the back so that kind of signals that there might be something up in here. But this is in the pile of documentation, schematics, data sheets, uh, user manuals and stuff that came with this and this is the price guide. Uh, it's for the S09 computer system which is uh, the serial number on the back of the 6809 says S09 so I'm Man, I'm gathering that it's the same thing, even though on the actual image, I do not recognize it. But I have a feeling this has a facelift because you may have seen that this is actually from 1983, this uh, this kind of price sheet. This specific model is uh, was pat it has pat tests on the back, uh, dating all the way back to 1980, so a remodel of the housing. But the prices are relatively crazy because I went on the pretense that the 6800, the one that was before this with the uh, 6800 processor, was a $500 kit. But now I'm starting to think that maybe I was mad because uh, there's some crazy numbers here. For instance, remember this is 1983, so it didn't take into account inflation, for instance. So, you know, you've got a twin floppy drive, excluding that, £2,300. But that doesn't stop there. So uh, it looks like the base uh, computer, I mean, you're looking, yeah, like four grand nearly. 
But if you want a 160 megabyte Winchester hard disk system, you're looking at 11 and a half grand for 160 megabytes. But the prices do get a little bit more reasonable when we're looking at the furniture. The rack mounting cabinet, which I guess is the thing that's imaged on the front, this thing right there, that is a whopping 490 pounds. And this is a maintenance policy, so you've got a fair chunk of maintenance on top. Uh, you've got 12 hour call out, so if you need to maintain it, these are the costs. Installation, 150 pounds. I'm not particularly sure, and please comment below if I've, that is not the matching price thing, because obviously this is an S-09, but it's it looks like it's housed in a different casing. So the next thing I really want to do is actually check if this thing is even complete because I will be an absolute plonker. I didn't even take the top off. I just fought with my heart and that is usually the worst thing to ever do. So let's have a look on the inside of the computer. I'm not going to be able to sleep happy until I see the 6809 sitting happily in its uh, socket. This is the first card that I've taken out. This is the disk drive controller. It is the DM3. Uh, I'm not going to pretend I know particularly much more about it than that. And hopefully it works because I haven't got a clue where to start with that thing. <laughs> oh no. Look at the wires uh, bridging connections together. I don't know whether this is a modification or it is a factory thing because I'm not sure how big SWT were at this point. So, you know, like this is this is some quick fixes. I maybe potentially, but hopefully, uh, you know, if it was working in 1983, I'm pretty sure it's working now, right? <laughs> So the next card we have along is the processor board. It's got the 6809 sitting there. Hopefully it works. There's nothing outwardly looking weird about this, uh, anything in here. So maybe I'll just boot it up and see what happens. Do the good old fashioned smoke test, shall we? <gasps> oh dear. Please correct me if I am wrong, but this looks like an um, 8K memory upgrade for the PC. Oh, look at how lovely those Motorola chips are. They're so nice with their gold legs. It's got a date of 1980, which gives a good uh, guessing of what the fudge is going on here. It's a lot later than I was actually expecting. So next up, we have two of these memory systems. This one has only got half of its allotted uh, memory, but the other one has got both filled up. The other one was Rev J, this one's Rev E, but as you can see, this one is actually full but wow this is this is this is full to the brim I've got two port cards that I don't dare to take out right now because they are firmly connected into the back and stuff like that but it looks reasonably together everything looks like it's all together and stuff so maybe if I'm lucky it might actually just just work nah I doubt it but we'll have a look at the voltages and then maybe maybe we'll just turn it on <laughs> So right here we have some pretty ginormous floppy drives. Uh, there isn't actually that much circuitry to them. I was quite surprised. There are just they're just huge mechanical chunks of loveliness and awesomeness. The ribbon cable is a little bit bodged, and I'm not sure actually how it's supposed to work. Oh no, it is. There is a slight indentation at the back that was made for the ribbon cable. It's a bit of a rubbish idea, to be honest. Why, why didn't they just have a hole for it? I'm not sure what would be wrong with these. There is obviously a lot of things that could be wrong, but I think it's going to be the same thing as the computer is just to turn it on and see what happens and work from there. As long as there's no outwardly looking dodgy bits, blown capacitors. Uh, I know there's somebody sitting there to go, no, no. I reckon this has been turned on at least once in the last year. So if I turn it on again, it's not, it's not going to be that bad. I've left in their uh, 1980s accounting records because, you know, if this gets torn off, it's, it, it's not the end of the world. Uh, right, here we go. Oh, they're spinning. They are spinning. The fans are going, the motor's spinning. Uh, that's all I can say right now. So uh, let's just uh, get to the next step. Right, so there is possibly some life in this. It's getting power, there's no smoke. We might be in business, but we won't know until we've got the terminal plugged in. And this is when the problem happens because the terminal had a blown fuse. So I'm not gonna turn that on until we have a look on the inside. So uh, let's do it. Luckily I found this page and it very much looks like it opens from the back. Wow, wow. I may be wrong here, but I think it's made of wood may very well be wood and here is the terminal itself it's a little bit grotty might need a little bit of a clean but that's not what we're going to do today we're going to see if it is actually 
gonna function at all or if it's just a lost cause right now for this video. I don't know yet, let's, let's have a look. What the hell? Ah! It seems that it was showing itself. I took this out and had a quick look inside there. There was a few spurious looking things and I sort of cleaned it up a little bit and yeah. Now we've got, it's incredibly quiet. Maybe I'm just deaf. <laughs> We're in business, oh yeah. So what I need to do now is I need to try and find a wire that's going to go from the computer to the terminal because I don't have one. I don't think it's a it's a it's the opposite to a printer cable. Oh dear. I can't find a cable and I haven't got any spare of the stuff of this ribbon stuff. So I'm just hijacking a uh, cable from the back of the Game Boy Mega Machine just so I can actually plug it in. Esk bug. It seems to have ourselves a bit of a problem. Uh, it seems to, uh, whenever you type in a letter, send it in twice, it seems to send it back. Oh gosh, what's that mean? Hey, hey, yes. So after fiddling around with various settings on the back of the port on the computer and the back of the terminal, I've finally got something that actually resembles them both working together. I found this really good video on uh, YouTube uh, of the SWTPC. The, the, the YouTube channel is called Tanru Nomad and he is covering it. It's very interesting. He covers everything to do with SWTPC and the SWTPC. He even programmed a game of cribbage for it. Whilst the game of cribbage is obviously awesome, it would be amazing to get this player music at some point. This has gone way further than I ever thought was going to be possible in this video. I half expected it to not work at all. So I don't know how to use this thing, but for the next video, I'm going to figure it out. However, right now, I'm basically just going to copy a few things that he has done on his video. The link for that video is below, but right now, I'm just going to reset the whole thing and we can get back to the S-Bug, which is the built-in operating system. So I've just turned it back on and apparently I'm just going to type in the thing. He says you can change the memory addresses, so I'm just going to change, I don't know, CC, yeah, 10, uh, it is now 80, apparently you can change it, I'm going to change it to 35 and now if I press, if I go back, hopefully it is going to give me back 35, yes, the computer works, that is amazing, that is incredible, I did not think in a million years this, this, this video, the actual thing was going to boot up and just function, that is so cool. Right, so now I know it works, I want to see if the floppy drive works. From my understanding what he says, and I don't know, and I may not get this right, and I may have completely got the idea, wrong idea, is if I put in the floppy drive, oh god, I'm going to have to figure this all out. Uh, turn this on. One, no, the, uh, oh god. So we have a little bit of progress. When I press D, which loads up the disc, well, uh, if I put, just press D, then there's a sound and a movement that comes from the floppy drive. But the problem is, is every time I try to load something from the floppy disk, it comes up with can't read IPL. And I think this is where this specific video is going to end, because I'm hoping somebody may potentially have an answer to this. It might just be user error and me just being an absolute plonker and not doing it correctly. But from now until the next time you see this, I'm going to get read up on actually how to use this thing. I haven't figured how to address the second floppy drive yet. So... I need to figure out that because one of them might work and the other one might not. Or it might be the floppy driver controller. I'm really not sure. So if you've got any experience and have any ideas, then please let me know. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video because, uh, yeah, this journey was truly preposterous. And if you want to see more computer videos, I'll have to change my name, but I'll be happy to do some because it does interest me. Like I said, you'll be seeing this again in the next video uh, in the coming days because I'm going to be doing a video on the thing that I actually went to go and get. 
this was purely accidental, but I just couldn't help myself but turn it on and see what the heck happens because I'm going to be eating beans for the next couple of months. If you want to see what I'm up to and what came with this, and I've already done a vlog over on Patreon looking through everything, and I'm actually going to do a live stream tomorrow night just going through it and uh, fixing it up a little bit more like an unedited version of this. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow night. So if you're interested in hopping on by and seeing some like live streaming, troubleshooting and stuff like that, well, that's actually going to happen over on Patreon tomorrow night. And needless to say, that supports uh, rather stupid things like this because this is just truly preposterous. I'm going to get to the bottom of this and I'm going to get some music out of it. Mark my words. Anyway, I've been Look Mum No Computer. This is a computer. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, don't be scared to try it.